Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dope Shit Podcast. You might question what it's about, but there you be a fool. Clues in the title. Nas, banana, the dopest of shit. Let's go. What's up everybody? Dope Shit Podcast, episode number 144. Yeah. 12 squared. I'm Cop NASA. Samurai Banana in the house. I'm trying to give me flashbacks to junior high school math. Hey man, I um, just know the math. It's what it is. So yes, That's yes, all it is. yes. You know the math. I did not know the math. Um, I wanted to get into like the vinyl business in this episode with you um, because I feel like there's two perspectives for for listeners, perhaps. Um, you know, like the fan that wants to buy vinyl may or may not be confused as to why pre-orders are so far out right now or why there's not as much vinyl being pressed by particular artists that they may like um and uh for artists that are listening you know like just what's going on if you're trying to press vinyl is, is sort of unprecedented and um some people may have a good grip in terms of like listeners on what's happening, why it's happening, and, and how it started happening. But I figured this might be a good time to kind of break that down. And um, it starts uh, for me with recently, um, I've got, with Uncommon Records, I've got several vinyl releases sort of in the pipeline, like now, not just in the pipeline in this room, but actually in the manufacturing pipeline, because that's how backed up things are. And um, I won't say which releases yet, um, but I have, um, you know, an LP release that, you know, we submitted everything, um, you know, in, God, probably September, I think. Um, I mean, we started the process before that, but, you know, in terms of handing everything over, artwork, you know, everything, it was probably like mid-September. And so I hand everything in, you know, I'm getting ready to pay the deposit, you know, it's a half, half deposit. That's the way things work. And um, I'm like, hey, you know, so, so that I could set release dates and everything. Um, what's the ETA on the return? And usually the return on vinyl is um, you would expect four to six months, I think is a cons- was a conservative estimate of when you could get your vinyl back when you submit it. Um, there was a time where three or four months was expected or a a decent amount to give yourself. Now that's just (laughs) laughably ridiculous. Um, So it got to four to six or seven months. And keep in mind, this is late September. And the production guy, you know, the way it works is like you you deal with the sales guy. um, And then when you get to this stage, you get handed off to the production guy, you know, and the production guy writes me back and he says, uh, November 22. Whoa, shit. And I'm like, let me just get this straight. Like November of 2022. Wow. Now by this time, it's like early October. It was right when September turned into October. So I'm confused because I'm like, did he mean to write July? <laughs> like, what is, like, is there something not November that, that, that could be negotiated here? And um, that's basically where it is. And, and that um, really was an eye opener. Now, do I know for a fact that things won't slide forward? I hope that they do. There's a chance that they will. I have never waited that long for vinyl, and I'm hoping that I never have to even if you're not buying vinyl, it's unavoidable how big of a deal it is. The yeah. the reissue market is through the roof. There's been a lot of articles written about hip hop reissues, but um, I can tell you from my experience, reggae reissues are, are at an all time high. Soul and funk reissues are at an all time high. Everything that's not been repressed on LP is being repressed on 45, which is good, I like 45s around here. Um, but you know, it's it's a crazy time um, because I think both of us probably have the experience of feeling like vinyl 
over the last 20 years, certainly, has been resurgent anyway. Um, oh, yeah. It's always been popular. It's just now it's it's really through the roof. And and what I wanted to kind of break down, and you can jump in and, and interject with uh, any questions or any, any points as I go through it, but like um, just how we got here, because it is so crazy that I am probably going to be waiting for vinyl for almost a year mm-hmm. like how much you know, so much can happen in a year yeah it, it just blows my mind a year plus you know maybe you know we're bordering on 13 14 months out months not weeks yeah um you know it's it's pretty insane and and my manufacturer has always done good by me um and you know i mean of course as a a business owner you know i check and compare to other places even though i like the work they've done for me and like you know the pricing is is sometimes an issue with other companies and the wait times i can tell you are exactly the same everywhere mm-hmm. so um i guess what i'll say is what has always been an issue has been there are only so many vinyl machines um and a lot of people don't realize this yeah, um, but there are only so many machines that make vinyl records on this planet, not in this country, not in this region on the mm-hmm. planet. Yeah, it's like um, fewer than 10, isn't it? It It's grown since because there are people oh, okay. that are starting to manufacture machines again. Right. Oh, OK. Um, OK. I was under the impression that it had shrunk over the last like it, like grown in it is it had um sort of been the inverse of vinyl's popularity i think i think there was a point where that was true there were only about 10 or so at least factories there were like maybe Mm -hmm. two or three machines in each factory Mm -hmm. um you know and a lot of the places like in particular my manufacturer actually is a is an american company that gets their vinyl press in the czech republic Mm -hmm. or or chechia i don't know what the name of that country is anymore it's changed a few times it's sorry, gotta see it sorry to all of our czech um fans i know that the label comes back from cz so that's a country in eastern europe um but they do amazing work the vinyl i mean i mean i'm just gonna say like anybody that's bought any of our vinyl can tell that it's high quality i wouldn't accept much less i wouldn't waste my money unless it was um on what we do it's thick um even the colored stuff is thick and um and it sounds really tight so shout out to to all the people that make our stuff happen but um my point is american pressers are are pretty loaded up um there are a few american press plants um usually they are far more expensive and have traditionally had longer wait times um many even now um especially now this is growing where they won't even take your order anymore wow like, there are a lot of plants that especially in the united states that will not take your order they will tell you we are not taking orders currently and wow. that's, that's the intense. end of the conversation uh because for them to take your order especially if you're you know i mean i'm a small business you know like when we press we're doing limited pressings of 100 copies you know, um, in certain instances, we'll do pressing of 250. We've done that before. Um, but, you know, usually you're looking at 100 copies and we sell through those. And, and, you know, when they sell out, they sell out, you know, and we usually sell more than half, you know, just during the pre-order. So that business model works for us, but that doesn't totally work for manufacturers who are getting Adele orders of 500,000 copies. Obviously, if you're doing 100 copies, you're in the back of the line of anyone. This is how the vinyl industry works as well. It, the smaller your order is, the further you go back in line. It's not mm-hmm. chronological by any means whatsoever, period, end of story. Um, if you're doing 250 or 100, like most of us are, or even 500, um like most indie labels are today even a thousand although you get a lot more clout with a thousand um you're behind any of the other people that are doing major labels or or reprint labels that are doing a thousand at a minimum and going upwards of you know 2500 
5k 10k and more um you know so it, it you know it, so uh, to get back on track like the big issue in the beginning was a shortage of machines and as vinyl became to be resurgent machines were used more the machines that did survive sort of like the culling in the 90s and the 2000s were getting used that hadn't been used for a while and they started to break down and there were only a few people alive that knew how to fix them and there were only a few companies left that could supply parts to repair them um it's my understanding that probably 3D printing has played a role in getting some parts for some of these older machines and like doing some of the refurbishing these days because now we live in the future with flying cars and all that shit. But, um, you know, so that's part of it. But there are machines being manufactured. Um, I think I saw a story about a company that had started that was building these machines from scratch. And, and you know, oh, cool. um, but that's not keeping pace with the amount of orders by any means whatsoever. So you have a shortage yeah. of machines, thus a shortage of factories. Um, if that factory has a problem, they're shut down. Nothing's coming out of that place. Um, I don't know how many plants there are in the world. I know that most plants, record plants, are concentrated in the United States and some in Canada and a large portion in Eastern Europe and Western Europe. Um, I'm sure there are plants in Asia, but that is a bit irrelevant for any conversation dealing with the United States or or um, or even Europe. Um, I, I know of a place that does quality work out of France. I know there are places in the United, uh, in the United Kingdom, um, but it's limited, you know, like, so that's mm -hmm. the first issue. Um, the second issue is on top of that, you've got, as we alluded to, you know, major labels are just repressing the fucking Rolling Stones greatest hits and, yeah pumping out five ten thousand copy runs of shit that everyone should have from their dollar bin in their local record store ten times over mm -hmm. and it's really fucking over the independent companies and and always has it's always been an issue um and that continues as vinyl gets more popular you have newer artists you know your taylor swifts and your adele's and those sorts of folks you've also got I send short fuse these these links sometimes just to fuck with them. Um, but like sometimes I'll see the most irrelevant vinyl pressing. Like mm -hmm. just like who the fuck is buying this? And I am not I'm not making this up. I saw a repress of the Muppets like movie soundtrack. Like from the 80s. And I'm just like, who the fuck is buying this on vinyl? Like, you know, probably is... so many people though. I don't. I mean, the Muppets aren't even hitting right now, even in a nostalgic way. Like, you know, it's not like a fucking, you know, like oh, the generation who... that knows the Muppets are my age. You know what I mean? Like, like this isn't yeah. a SpongeBob that's fucking who's buying, vinyl. You but, know, like. But that's who's buying vinyl. Is like, you know. Yeah, old people. A lot of people don't realize, I think, that when you buy a repress of a classic hip hop album uh, from Get On Down, or you buy a new pressing of a major label artist, that you're on the same pressing plant, you know, as mm -hmm. anyone else. I was in, uh, you know, when I picked up the vinyl for Only Child. The guys that were handing me the vinyl were discussing where they're going to put Nori's album, <laughs> and so it's like you know, like you're you're right there, like you, little old indie uncommon records is in the same plant with, you know, people with a much larger history in in this business, mm -hmm. um, and you're directly competing, you know, mm -hmm. um, for space on the plant on top of this landscape that I've just described that was causing four to six or seven month delays. Now you're adding a pandemic. You're adding the fact that raw materials are hard to get to make vinyl records, um, to print off album covers, to staff factories, to staff warehouses. And 
to ship these things across the ocean, in, in my case, and in most people's cases, most people are not pressing in the United States that live in the United States, unless they have a lot of money to burn, because it's actually really expensive to press vinyl in the United States, even though you're paying a higher shipping rate to get from the EU, it could be exponentially more money per unit without even getting into shipping yet when you're in the United States. Um, because like I said before, the United States plants, a lot of them are just not even taking work anymore because, mm -hmm. you know, they're so backed up. Um, so, you know, I mean, we all see the news, you know, ships are out in the ocean and all this other stuff, you know, supply chains, blah, blah, blah. It affects vinyl too. You know, um, I've had to spring for um, like DHL direct flight delivery from Europe lately, um, because if you put it on a boat, you don't know if it's ever going to show up. So because I used to put it on a boat and it was like 40 bucks, you know, to get like 100 records and, you know, DHL is like a buck 10, but it was worth spending the extra money because I need the shit, you know, like, so yeah. it's, it's, you know, and, you know, you do the map, I mean, you know, $60 is $60, not that big of a deal, but you work that into your price per unit when you're only, when you only have a hundred copies, which means you basically have 95 copies to sell. And that's why you see vinyl prices going up is because it's, it's a lot harder to justify, at least for a lot of small labels pressing 250 and selling for 20 a piece because you're never going to get there um mm -hmm. unless you're you know really moving shit um and that's why you see a lot of companies including mine you know pressing 100 and selling for 30 because you can get there mm -hmm. faster and even if you are doing big things you'll see companies do 100 of this color and 100 of that color and 100 of this color and then they sell that all, all of those for 30 each or maybe even more, you know, if they do special colors off because they're they're, you know, that's the other thing that's happening in the industry is like you've got this sort of created scarcity um, mm -hmm. that's happening in order to raise prices on top of actual scarcity that's happening because vinyl is so hard to press right now. So it's, you know, a lot of times like the the buyer is sort of protected from these things by the smarter companies. Um, I think the smart companies are able to just set their their release dates um, accordingly. You know, they don't like throw a date out there and then find out when their vinyl is coming in, which I have seen some mm -hmm. companies do. I mean, it's obvious yeah. that's the mistake they made because all of a sudden something is pushed back eight months um, because nobody bothered to ask the plant when the shit would actually be delivered. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's getting harder to do that, you know, I mean, it's, I can't, you know, because I have several records, you know, the label has several records planned. I can't hold all of those albums until November of 2022. Yeah. So obviously, there's going to be a pre order and, you know, maybe some other mediums of some of these releases coming out. And actually, one thing I would say for me is it is it is it makes like cd and cassette more viable again um well that was my understanding of like why cassettes came back was yes. that they were really easy to make um really fast to make um and you could still attach like custom artwork and blah 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 sell it for cheap so you can sell uh, theoretically more copies um yeah and it's but it's the same thing it's like who has a fucking pay player well so. the thing when when the first time we did a tape was new york telephone and that record took off and i sold through like 150 tapes over time which was the the equivalent of three pressings i did 50 at a time mm -hmm. and it was a great time you know to be me um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's good, um, to sell things. Um, that was now almost eight years ago, which is kind of 
disturbing. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, seven and a half years ago, because uh, it came out in August of 2014. But um, yeah, I mean, at the time, the reason I bring that up is is not to just pat myself on the back, but um, is to say um, I did that because I couldn't afford vinyl at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, vinyl was more expensive than it is now because back then they didn't let you do 100 copies. If you mm. wanted 100 copies, they'd tell you to go fuck off, you know, and anybody that would press 100 copies would be pressing like in a garage somewhere. It was like it was shit, you know, like it was mm -hmm. like Brooklyn Fono or some crap that was just like throwing you like the shittiest vinyl product possible. Um, yeah, I, I didn't get along with them, so I don't mind throwing them on the bus. <laughs> I, I had a bad experience with them. But um, yeah, so, you know, it's it's. It was complicated, but you know, luckily I, I had some opportunities come my way and I was able to kind of convert the label into a vinyl label over time. And, you know, and, and again, a combination of things happen where you're able to do shorter runs. Um, you know, the price difference between pressing 100 and pressing 250 is not that different. Mm. The only difference is obviously your shipping costs like more than double, but that's not that important. The problem is, you know, storing you know, yeah. the excess, you know, when you're really going to sell, you know, between 90 and 150 anyway, then, you know what I mean? Like in realistic terms, because mm -hmm. like, it'd be one thing if I was a solo artist and I was going to make three albums in my whole life, mm -hmm. but I'm running a record label, you know, like I'm putting out records two, three times a year. And if I was pressing everything at 250, this place would look like a fucking warehouse after <laughs> it would be it would be absurd so i'd rather take the l on the inventory you know what i mean and just charge a little bit more for something scarce and i, I think that's where mm -hmm. i don't think i'm unique as a as a label owner in any way in that you know i think that's where everybody is and i think that's mm -hmm. why you're seeing you know 30 dollars be the price point and for some 40 and 50 dollars depending on you know who the artist is or who the label is um mm -hmm. you know as opposed to back in the day you know where you were getting your out your lps for 19.99 or you know maybe a double a double would be 24.99 or something this is mm -hmm. back in the days when i was djing hip-hop when i was going to fat beats or, and, and all that you know you would get albums sometimes like a single album then uh, a single lp would be like 15.99 back then you know, mm -hmm. and, and that yeah. those prices held for a pretty long time. They really held through the early years of us doing vinyl, you know, 2014, 15, 16. And then mm -hmm. around then things changed. Um, yeah. I think I think vinyl became more of a boutique industry and it was really an Instagrammable service, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's about making the shit look pretty and then delivering, you know, if you're good honest seller of vinyl delivering something that matches how good it looks you know mm -hmm. um you know because you know you can make something look great on instagram and then deliver a, a very thin stock of vinyl or you know something that doesn't look that great when you have it in person um i think really I try to take pride and, you know, shout out to Jazz Pants for doing all our graphic arts, like in, in delivering something that people are happy with when they get it in their hands, too. So that's sort of where we are. That's the vinyl business. Um, that's I don't know if there's anything else to say about that. I we're, we're all, you know, there's two ways to look at it. I mean, it's easy to just say, well, we're all screwed. <laughs> you know, yeah. like this is just we're all screwed um, to some degree we are um but you have to make it work you know I, I in music um i have learned to go with the mantra of things come out when they're supposed to come out and mm -hmm. uh, those are things that are completely out of your control good luck if you're <laughs> if you're if you're just getting started it's 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 a good time to press vinyl but it's also um a challenging time to press vinyl.